Hi, I'm Dawn with Drucker Diagnostics, and today we're going to review the basic operations of your Boost 2 Plus Flex centrifuge. If you're looking for something specific, take a look at the bottom of your screen. This video is divided into chapters so you can easily find what you need. Boost 2 Plus Flex Basic Operations Guide Part 1 Setting up the Boost 2 Plus Flex. To start, Make sure that your Boost 2 Plus Flex arrived with all of its necessary accessories. These accessories will come out of the smaller cardboard box that was packed in with your Boost 2 Plus Flex. You should have a power cord, a quick start insert guide, that's also your link to the manual, and two black buckets. Depending on what you selected when you purchased your Boost 2 Plus Flex, you may also have two or more inserts. These sit inside the buckets and can be used to spin a variety of different tube sizes. Once you've confirmed that all of your accessories are present, it's time to get the Boost 2 Plus Flex set up. Start by finding a flat, level surface. You will need at least 6 inches or 15 centimeters of clearance on all sides of the centrifuge and you will need at least 21 inches or 54 centimeters of clearance at the top so you can open the lid. Once you've got your centrifuge placed, go ahead and turn it around so that you're looking at the back. From here, you're going to get your power cord and plug it into the back of the centrifuge. Next, you'll plug the other end of that power cord into a wall outlet. Make sure that wall outlet is easily accessible as you will need to unplug your Boost 2 Plus Flex for any cleaning. Once you've got the centrifuge plugged in, go ahead and locate the power button on the back and turn it on. Once you turn your Boost 2 Plus Flex around, you should see that the displays have illuminated, which means that your centrifuge is successfully receiving power. To unlock the centrifuge, we'll need to press the stop unlock button here on the control panel. If you want a more in-depth overview of the rest of these controls, a link to that video is popping up on your screen right now. Once we've hit stop unlock, we can open the lid by pressing down gently on that lid latch and turning it a quarter turn counterclockwise and then lifting the lid open. Now we can see our rotor inside. Your Boost 2 Plus Flex arrives with the rotor installed and ready to run. All that you will need to do is place those two black buckets onto the pins that you can see here in the rotor. They do not click or snap into place, they simply gently rest on those pins. If you have any inserts for the tubes that you intend to spin, you can simply seat them inside those buckets now. Your Boost 2 Plus Flex has only authentic Drucker parts, including the rotor and tube holders. You should only use authentic Drucker parts in your centrifuge, as anything else may damage your centrifuge or even be dangerous. Now that we have our Boost 2 Plus Flex set up, we can take a look at our controls. Part 2 Controls Overview Your Boost 2 Plus Flex has all of its controls Right here on the front panel, your Boost 2 Plus Flex has a QR code on the front panel. When you scan this QR code, it will link you to a page that allows you to access the manual, accessories, easy reorder, and other helpful features. Next is the RPM screen. This screen shows the currently selected speed in RPMs. It is controlled by these buttons to the right. A single press up will increase RPMs by 50, while a single press down will decrease by 50. You'll notice that as the RPMs change, the screen value changes dynamically, always representing the exact current RPM that you have selected. Underneath this screen, we have the RCFXG button. Pressing and holding this button will change the number on the RPM screen to instead represent the RCF or XG. When you have RCF XG button held down, you can use those same buttons to the right of the RPM screen to adjust your speed using the G-force instead. Once you release that RCF XG button, that RPM screen will revert back to showing RPMs. But don't worry, 
if you adjust RPMs, you are inherently adjusting the G-force, and if you adjust your G-force, the RPMs will adjust as well. Next, we have our indicator lights. The left-hand light is illuminated whenever the centrifuge is running. The center light is illuminated whenever the centrifuge is locked. And the right-hand light is illuminated whenever the centrifuge is unlocked. The left and middle lights are commonly illuminated at the same time, as the centrifuge is always locked when it is running. Next, we have our stop unlock button. This will stop any currently running cycle, or if the centrifuge is at rest, will unlock the lid latch system. Next, we have our start button. This button will start a cycle with the currently selected settings. Next, we have the time screen. This screen shows the currently selected runtime in minutes and seconds. You can adjust it using the arrows to the right. A single press up will increase by 30 seconds, and a single press down will decrease by 30 seconds. To the right of this, we have our brake setting indicator. Brake values on the Boost 2 Plus Flex range from zero, no braking at all, to nine, maximum braking. In order to adjust the braking level, you will need to press and hold the menu button located to the right of the brake screen. You will see the word brake show up in the RPM screen at the top of the centrifuge. You can adjust that braking number using the up and down arrows next to the time screen. Once that number shows as desired, you can press the menu button again to save that and to exit. To the right of this, we have our cycle indicator and our cycle button. This cycle indicator will show you the number of the cycle that is currently selected. Or, if there is no saved cycle currently selected, it will show you a dashed line. The cycle button has two purposes. If saved cycles are created, the cycle button can move through them. Simply press that cycle button and it will rotate through any saved cycles that you have. Additionally, the cycle button can be used to create new saved cycles. Simply program the speed, time, and break values as desired, and once they're showing up as you want them on your screen, press and hold the cycle button. A new cycle will automatically be created. And those are your controls. Now, let's look at how to load your Boost 2 Plus Flex and spin your first samples. Part three, spinning samples. Before we can spin a cycle in the Boost 2 Plus Flex, we need to make sure the centrifuge is correctly loaded. That means the samples it will spin are balanced. Like any centrifuge, the Boost 2 Plus Flex should always be run with a balanced load. This helps keep the lab safe and ensures maximum lifespan for your centrifuge. Step one, make sure that both buckets are loaded in your Boost 2 Plus Flex. These buckets do not snap or click, but rather rest on the pins inside the centrifuge rotor. Step two, place inserts if needed to spin a smaller tube. If using inserts, they must match. The insert in one bucket must be the same dimensions as the insert in the second bucket. Step three, place your sample. It should be securely seated within the insert or bucket, but it does not snap or click into place. If only spinning one sample, you'll need a counterbalance in the other bucket. This should be an identical tube filled with an equivalent volume of water. The counterbalance should be roughly the same weight as your filled tube. With your buckets placed, your inserts, if needed, inside them, and your tubes or tube and counterbalance in place, you're ready to spin. Close the lid. Secure the lid latch by pressing it down gently and turning it a quarter turn clockwise. Next, adjust your settings. You can adjust RPM and time using the buttons next to their display windows. For a more detailed guide, click the video on your screen. In our case, we're going to run at 2000 RPM for three minutes. Once our settings are displayed as desired, we check that our lid is closed and latched, and then press the Start 
button. The centrifuge will start spinning. Once it reaches the programmed RPM, the timer will start counting down. Once it has run the full time, the centrifuge will begin to slow down, applying the brake as set. Once it has come to a complete stop, the lid lights will flash and the centrifuge will beep to let you know it's done. And that's all there is to it. You just ran your first cycle. Now, let's look at how you should clean and maintain your Boost 2 Plus Flex. Part 4, Cleaning and Maintaining. Your Boost 2 Plus Flex requires no regular maintenance and cleaning is easy too. Start by using the power switch on the back of your Boost 2 Plus Flex to turn the centrifuge off. Next, unplug it from the wall. Your centrifuge should always be turned off and unplugged before you do any kind of cleaning. Make sure you wear appropriate personal protective equipment as outlined in your lab's policies. Only isopropyl alcohol or 10% 5500 ppm bleach solution should be used to clean your Boost 2 Plus Flex. You should never submerge the centrifuge. Instead, apply your cleaning solution to a dry cloth and wipe it across the centrifuge. You should then immediately use another clean dry cloth to wipe the centrifuge off. Make sure that only isopropyl alcohol or 10% 5500 ppm bleach solution are used to clean your centrifuge. Any other cleaning agents may damage the centrifuge and void the warranty. Your Boost 2 Plus Flex does not require any regular maintenance, but you may wish to confirm your spin speed. To do that, you will need a photo tachometer. We are showing one here for reference. Your lab should have a calibrated photo tachometer available for this purpose. The rotor of your Boost 2 Plus Flex has a photo strip on it already. No need to add one before using your photo tachometer. To start, simply select the RPM that you would like to evaluate on your Boost 2 Plus Flex. Once you've got the correct RPM showing on the screen, go ahead and press the start button. Your centrifuge will begin reaching that RPM and you'll know that it's there once that countdown timer starts in the time screen. Once that countdown timer has started, use your photo tachometer and point it down through the lid right up against the black part, but making sure that the tachometer is looking down through the clear lid. You should receive a reading almost immediately. And that brings us to the end of our basic operations guide for the Boost 2 Plus Flex. We set up our centrifuge and reviewed its accessories. We reviewed our controls and spun our first cycle. And we learned how to clean and maintain it. If you have any other questions about your Boost 2 Plus Flex, you can always contact Drucker Diagnostics Customer Service and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.